Well, hi there. It's me, Lori, and I made it up this amazing climb. I'll put some pictures on this blog so you can see. I just had to get to this one rock up here, so I'm all sweaty, but I'm excited that I made it up. It kind of reminds me of uh, something someone said just yesterday. They said, hey, if you're going in the right direction, you're probably going to be going uphill. So things are going to be a challenge. It's going to be work, but that's to get to the higher ground, to get to the better place to be happier. So today, um, my glasses are going to just slide off my nose because I'm so sweaty, um, is step seven, humility. And as I think about this being humble, it's also accepting, accepting ourselves where we're at and being okay with that and being open and aware to the changes that are coming our way. Um, humility is humbly ask Heavenly Father to remove your shortcomings. So all the, step, all the steps, actually, all the steps require being humble and having humility. Uh, humbly ask Heavenly Father to remove your shortcomings. The humble heart we developed in step six, that change of heart that we had, brought us to our knees in step seven to ask the Lord to remove our shortcomings. When we had, per <clears throat> when we had progressed to this point, we were ready to pray without any other motivation but our desire to become one in heart and in mind with Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. No longer were we satisfied with the change in habits or even in lifestyle. We were finally ready to have God change our very nature. And for those of you who um, believe in another higher power, you can uh, hopefully that you can change this as you listen to it because these are truths that work for anybody. Um, to let's see. So what it would be is to. <laughs> I think just beeped on my phone. See, what it would be is to uh, pray without any other motivation but our desire to become one in heart and in mind with our greater power than us, with the universe, or with true intention. When we become one with intention, it will change our very nature. So if you could kind of keep that in mind as we read, this can open up another great growing and changing process for you to become better and more closer to your true intent. Step seven represented for each of us such a total surrender to the Savior that many of us could not help but cry out in our hearts, as Alma did, O oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me. Genuine remorse filled our hearts, not only because we had suffered or made others suffer, but because we regretted that even in recovery we still could not remove our own shortcomings. Having felt a portion of the love of God, we desired to give up all our sins, even all incl inclination to sin, so we might know Him better. Finally, voluntarily, with all our hearts, we offered our whole souls to God and asked Him to forgive us and make us in His image. We had finally come to realize that no other name, no other way, no other means can give us a complete remission of our sins. Holding nothing back, we pled with the Father that He, in His infinite mercy, would forgive us for all our pride, transgressions, and shortcomings. We ask that He would grant us grace, that through Him we might maintain His new way of life. The Lord did not begin such a revolutionary change of our entire character until we allowed Him to do so. We had to humble ourselves deliberately. We had to surrender every particle of self-sufficient pride and admit that our efforts to save ourselves had become, or had been insufficient. We had to feel and live the truth King Benjamin taught that we are all beggars before God and have no hope of salvation by our own efforts, but only through the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Marked for each of us, um, step seven, this humility, marked for each of us the moment when we finally yielded without reservation to the eternal truth taught in Mosiah 16.4, all mankind were lost, and behold, they would have been endlessly lost were it not that God redeemed his people from their lost and fallen state. Our experience taught us that in taking step seven, we were not excused from the work that was ours to do. We still had to be patient and press forward with a steadfastness in Christ. <laughs> Are you going to make it? <laughs> Goodness sake. Okay. <laughs> we had not become entirely free from the desire to sin. We had to learn to accept life on God's term and wait upon... Sorry, we had to learn to accept life on God's terms. There's not just one term, is there? <laughs> on God's terms and wait upon His purpose and His timing, even in the removal of our shortcomings. 
In Taking Step 7, we learn to live with the same humility and patience toward God that Alma and his brethren showed when their burdens were lightened but not removed. So that story, too, let me tell you about that. Um, there were uh, some warring, warring tribes, and there were the uh, Nephites and the Lamanites. And what happened was um, these people were taken hostage, and they were slaves. And the Lamanites made them work night and day and toil. And <laughs> I think he got it. And in that period of time, they prayed to God for help. And, of course, they wanted him to, to deliver them out of this issue. But, um, and he didn't. I, I thought it's really cool because sometimes, I mean, this is real life. Um, God doesn't always remove that challenge or that struggle because that's what's going to help us stretch and grow. And it's going to also help us move closer to that intent. And um, he, But he did lighten their burdens. And as we become